Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers. I know that uh, I've not been able to do uh, justice as far as uh, this World Cup 2019 is concerned. I, I really, really regret it from the bottom of my heart, but I have some pressing issues at home uh, that really prevents me uh, from doing my cricket show on a very daily basis. Uh, I'm extremely sorry. I've been very, very, uh, really, as I said, a lot of pressing issues going on at home. Right. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, we are talking, as I said, as usual, I've come here to do a roundup. Uh, we are going to look at the week that happened in this uh, World Cup 2019. Today we had a match where it was an odd equation. It was, uh, it's already decided. Uh, let me just uh, tell you uh, that the semi-final spots have been decided. It's India, uh, England, Australia and New Zealand were the, were, will be the ones who would be, uh, who have entered the semi-finals. Now, uh, looking at the game, so today it was a match which, uh, a real damn script one could say, because uh, Pakistan, if at all they wanted, uh, they have to beat Bangladesh, they have to beat them by 316 runs and that's uh, something which is out of the realms of possibility, uh, which never happened and uh, one knew about it and uh, well, but the consolation was that Pakistan won the match and Pakistan can't make it to the semi-finals. Talking about the games uh, that happened, so let's uh, look at uh, the last time that uh, I did my cricket broadcast was on 1st of July and now we are talking about the 2nd July match which happened between India and Bangladesh. Now one has to say that Bangladesh this time in the World Cup has brought the strongest unit and they have put a great show. Uh, India made 314 for 9, a brilliant 180 runs partnership between uh, the Indian openers Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul uh, providing the early impetus of 180 runs with Rohit Sharma getting on uh, to a century. I mean he, he made his, uh, it was his uh, fourth century in the World Cup. Now as far as four centuries are concerned, there's only one man who has actually um, hit four centuries in a World Cup and that man is now, right now, he's, he's a cricket commentator uh, in the World Cup 2000 and, and definitely I love the cricket commentary of this bloke and his name is none other than that graceful cricketer uh, from Sri Lanka, former uh, wonderful wicketkeeper batsman Kumar Sangakara and Kumar Sangakara uh, he's a wonderful commentator. I mean, I've been really loving his commentary. He brings a lot of excitement, a lot of energy into it, which is a sort of a, a sort of a big plus for a cricket commentator, and which is always needed. Uh, so India actually making a 314 for that Rohit Sharma uh, getting on to his fourth century, and uh, this is the first Indian who has made four centuries in a World Cup and Roy Sharma has that particular cap. I really, really feel so great for him. Uh, he's turning out to be one of the great players for India now, Rohit Sharma, and Kumar Sangakara has done it four times. So equal that world record of Kumar Sangakara, which uh, Kumar Sangakara made four centuries in a World Cup in the year 2015. So this match, as I said, Bangladesh fought absolutely to the hilt one could say which they have been normally doing so no score is safe as far as Bangladesh is concerned uh, due to their um, a growing stature in world cricket and India made 314 for 9 uh, Bangladesh um, um, just kept the uh, fight going Shakib al Hassan he has it has been a wonderful tournament for Shakib al Hassan he has finished with 600 odd runs uh, and he has equaled uh, uh, two good players in the uh, in the in the cricketing firmament, uh, one is the former Australian opener Matthew Hayden, uh, and there's also one more player. I don't remember the name right now. So India Bangladesh, uh, the outcome was that uh, Bangladesh fought till the end. Mohammad Saifuddin, <coughs> a new player uh, who did very well and showed us uh, showed that he could be a very good all-rounder for Bangladesh in the making. India won the match by 28 runs uh, to basically secure their semi-final semi spot. The 41st match that happened was a very, very crucial match between two sides, England and New Zealand. And uh, the hosts, England, were the ones who clinched it. Once again, um, the opening partnership has been the feature for England with Jason Roy returning back to business. Jason Roy and Barristow are the ones who work well. 
and once again Jonathan Barristow smoking a century, his third century in this World Cup. Jason Roy making 60 yard runs but and uh, 305 for 8. New Zealand definitely didn't have any handle on the English bowlers. The English bowlers totally throttled the, uh, new, the Kiwi uh, uh, batsmen and the New Zealanders were bowled out for 186 with Tom Latham uh, having the highest score of 57. So that enabled England to qualify for the semi-final but New Zealand had to still wait on to see what happened between but but the West Indies uh, uh, England and New Zealand uh, once that match happened it pushed Sri Lanka out of the fray West Indies uh, were out of the fray and then the a non-consequential match which happened yesterday between West Indies and Afghanistan that is the 42nd match at Leeds where West Indies had 311 so Evan Lewis uh, contributing um, some good runs. Uh, we saw Nicholas Puran who has been having a great tournament uh, in his fir ever, first ever World Cup and uh, West Indies made 311 for six. Jason Holder contributing uh, and uh, Afghanistan definitely showing a lot of pluck in chasing that 311. Uh, um, uh, there was a, a century, uh, not a century, uh, we saw two uh, wonderful players emerging from Afghanistan. One is Ramit Shah getting his first ever 50 in a World Cup and what a player he's going to turn out to be for Afghanistan with the with the pure timing of his strokes uh, absolutely he's a typical typical technically the most technically perfect batsman in the Afghanistan team and now and yesterday uh, they unearthed another uh, youngster by the name uh, Ikram Al Khalil uh, Ikram Al Khalil and he also looks a real pitcher I mean the way he played uh, he could um, he could uh, mix up and uh, he has become the youngest player uh, uh, in the World Cup to go and score a half century for Afghanistan and Afghanistan as I said really made a good fist of it they went uh, when uh, they, they tried to uh, really run the West Indies close and in the final verdict was that West Indies won the match by 23 runs and so that decided that Pakistan who were playing Bangladesh today in the 43rd match at the Lodge Cricket Ground, this is the first meeting ever between a Pakistan and Bangladesh at the Lodge Cricket Ground. And uh, well, it was again, uh, it was a sort of a gone case match, no doubt about it. Pakistan were virtually out of the uh, out of the fray as far as the semi-finals were concerned. Uh, but uh, what one saw here is some good batsmanship from Pakistan. I mean, um, as I said, the equation was very, very... A high equation of uh, you know beating Bangladesh by 316 runs and that was not a possibility so let's have a look at what Pakistan did today so Pakistan batted first and uh, they put on uh, 315 for 9 on the board now this was driven uh, by uh, Imamul Haq century so Imamul Haq actually playing his first World Cup uh, getting his uh, first ever century in a World Cup I mean he has been doing a good job in this uh, World Cup uh, but uh, Pakistan actually, Imam al uh, getting on to a century, 100 of uh, exactly 100 balls, so run a ball stuff with 7 boundaries. Fakhar Zaman making 13 of 31 with 1 boundary. Babar Azam could have joined Imam al and Babar Azam, you know, he's a prolific record in ODIs. The other day he scored his 10th ODI century, could have been his 11th ODI century, which never happened as he was uh, LBW bowl Mohammed Saifuddin for 96. That was a big partnership after the early dismissal of uh, Fakhar Zaman. So Fakhar Zaman was gone with the score on 23 for 1 in the 8th over and after that it was a, a scintillating partnership of 157 runs uh, between these two players, uh, uh, Imam al Haq and Babar Azam. With Babar Azam, his strokes are something pictured to perfection. 96, he was, he was spurring along 96 of 98 deliveries, 11 boundaries in that knock of 96. Harris Sohail failed to the bat, he was out for 6. Imad Bazim uh, did his bet as he normally does for Pakistan nowadays. 43 cracked of just 26 deliveries, which included 6 fours and 1 6. After that, uh, there was nothing to offer. Safra Adam was not out on 3, Riyaz out for 2, Shaddab 1, Muhammad Amir 8, and 315 for 9 on the board uh, for. Uh, uh, for Pakistan. Now, uh, the other day, as you know, Must I, I forgot to share that Mustafa Rahman uh, took a five wicket bag against India and today followed it with another five wicket bag, this time against Pakistan. Then I was no made in 75 runs and five wickets from Mustafa Rahman, who has really bowled superbly in this World Cup. Saifuddin 
9077 has been doing his job a bit of taking picking up the wickets Mehdi Asan Miraz was really excellent I thought I mean Mehdi Asan Miraz I, I wouldn't have a clue as to why Mehdi Asan Miraz uh, didn't play a few matches because I, I always have thought that Mehdi Asan Miraz is somewhat of a special package for Bangladesh because he brings three dimensions uh, to the game he's a good bat he, he's a very very handy batsman to have he's a wonderful off spinner and besides that he's a wonderful fielder as well 10 overs no made in one for 30 splendid bowling from Marius and Miraz very happy for Marius and Miraz bowling today Mashafai Murtaza 7 was done for 46 Shakib Al Hassan 10 overs no made in none for 57 Nasrudak Hussain 4 overs no made in none for 27 now Bangladesh were given a target of 316 runs to win uh, and today uh, well it was uh, really not their day uh, Tamim Mikbal was out for 8 Soumya Sarkar uh, made 22 of as many balls, 4 bounded, but Shakib Al Hassan, as I said, uh, ha has a great World Cup. I mean, 2019 World Cup. I mean, Shakib Al Hassan, I think uh, he has not scored anything less than a 50, according to me. And I think this is a record. Shakib Al Hassan had 64 to his name of 77 deliveries. And he was the only man to offer resistance to the Pakistani bowlers, especially Shine Shah Freedi, who was an absolute fire, becoming the youngest ever bowler. Uh, to take a Pfeiffer in a World Cup. In fact, he went on to take the best figures by a Pakistani bowler. 6 for 35 in the World Cup. So, Mushfiq Rahim was out for 16. He was castled by Wahab Riyaz. Litton Das, 32 of 40, 3 boundaries. Mahmoodullah, 29 of 41, 3 boundaries. 16 to Masada Kusain. Mohamed Saifuddin was out for not. Mahdi Asim Riyaz was not on 7. Mashrafa Murtaza, 15. Mustafa Rahman, 1. 221 all out, a big win for Pakistan there, at least it will get their standings good in the World Cup at least. So Pakistan winning that match uh, handsomely by 94 runs against Bangladesh. Now as I said, Shine Shah Afridi has become the youngest ever bowler in World Cup uh, to capture a Pfeiffer. Uh, 9.1 overs, no maidens, 35 runs. And six wickets. Tremendous bowling spell from Shine Shah Afridi, the left arm young media, uh, young pace bowler. Mohamed Afiz, his swan song as far as the World Cup is concerned. Six overs, one made and none for 32. Mohamed Amir, seven overs, one for 31. Wahab Riyaz, seven overs, one for 33. Ahmed Wazim, six overs, none for 26. Sharab Khan received a real clatter from the Bangladeshi batsman. Nine overs, no made and two for 59. And the man of the match going to Shaheen Shah Afridi for his, for his brilliant uh, bowling exploits. Uh, one has to say, uh, it was also the swan song uh, for that wonderful player who is not going to be seen in West Indies colours anymore. His name is Chris Henry Gale, who was given a wonderful send-off. Even though he failed with the bat yesterday, he was given a wonderful send-off. And the Pakistan also... Uh, did a very good gesture, even though Shoaib Malik, the 37-year-old uh, uh, player who has been who had been serving Pakistan for a long time, also it was his swan song as far as the World Cup is concerned. So uh, probably Mohamed Afiz has probably played his last World Cup, uh, and Shoaib Malik has already played his last World Cup, and uh, it's curtains for both the players, both wonderful players, uh, uh, you know, uh, having played for Pakistan. And Chris Gale, as I said, as also. And now, uh, tomorrow would see one more man who would be uh, would not be seen in any World Cup anymore. His name is Lasit Malinga. Lasit Malinga has done yeoman service to Sri Lanka. Would be playing his last match uh, of the World Cup, and that is against India. Now, India has nothing to uh, really. I mean, Sri Lanka are already out and India have already qualified for the semi-finals. So this will be a sort of a real practice match for India. It will be interesting to see uh, whether all those uh, players, I would be uh, very interesting to see uh, whether all those players were actually been benched. I mean, benched in the sense, Dinesh Karthik played one game. Mayank Agarwal has come. Uh, I don't know, it would be a very good uh, thing uh, to actually uh, uh, give those players a chance uh, just to see uh, what comes up. And I think there's nothing... I mean, there's nothing to lose because India have already uh, qualified for the semi-finals. Then why not give the chances to all those players? Uh, even it, if it if it meant losing to Sri Lanka, I I think one should not mind. It is a good opportunity, uh, but it is something uh, probably probably 
uh, one could I would be I would be liking to see Ravindra Jadeja, Dinesh Karthik, Mayank Agarwal, uh, and any other player who have been actually uh, been uh, been in the uh, sort of been uh, in the in the in the team but not able to play any match. I would be willing to see all of them in action tomorrow. But let us uh, hope. Let us see uh, as to what the Indian think tank is. Sometimes it's always uh, a better feeling being the World Cup. There could be a possibility that India might. Uh, India have lost only one match now, but probably there might be a feeling that to keep up the winning habit, they might want to not uh, you know test any players right now. Well, it is entirely left to them. But this is my take on the on my cricket show today. And so Lasith Malinga. Um, uh, would not would be probably bowling his last 10 overs of the World Cup tomorrow against India and uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka definitely a good unit and uh, definitely watch out for this young bloke from uh, from Sri Lanka uh, is none other than that exciting uh, young player uh, who has really made waves in this World Cup with his tremendous stroke making his name Avishka Fernando from Sri Lanka what a graceful player and what a wonderful player to watch when he gets into action there and let me tell you don't bowl short balls to this bloke as I said it would disappear either into the fence or it would disappear over the fence uh, such is his mastery over the short stuff so that is um, as far as uh, the match is concerned there's also one more match which is coming up again uh, we are, uh, there is no consequence about that match as Australia have already entered the uh, have already entered the uh, semi-finals Australia will take on South Africa and should be a very good game of cricket no doubt about it um, and I believe uh, Marsh is out of the mix and Peter Hanscom and I'm sure um, uh, Australia would uh, be playing Peter Hanscom in this particular match well uh, dear fans subscribers having said this it's about time to uh, really wind up this cricket show for today uh, and I hope you all uh, enjoyed this cricket broadcast which was a uh, real roundup of the matches that happened in the last week in the World Cup. As I said, I have not been able to come uh, very regularly uh, on this daily cricket show and uh, given my comments, but I was, as I always told you, uh, my, the best bet is to go on to my Twitter. Yes, I could not uh, do any tweet on yesterday on Twitter on cricket, but uh, well, you can look at my tweets that I have been doing uh, on a daily basis and also uh, my uh, cricket website uh, where uh, I normally uh, do a bit of a some sort of a, I wouldn't say big blogging I would be doing a sort of a very brief blogging one could say and I've been doing that uh, you can have a look at each of my blogs there and uh, well it's uh, it's cricket uh, um, hyphen status so cricket dash status dot com is my cricket website where you could get connected to well dear fans subscribers a pleasure bringing you this cricket show uh, every time I I come and talk to you, I feel the pleasure, I feel the sort of adrenaline uh, flowing in my veins here as I talk about cricket. Thanks for your company and keep watching uh, this cricket broadcast of mine, Cricket Happenings, if you like them. And uh, well, as I said, you can go on to my Twitter, go on to my cricket website. Uh, with this being said, it's about time to finally wind up this cricket show by saying goodbye. But promising you that tomorrow I'll be back with the broadcast on both the matches that are coming up tomorrow, but which is of no consequence, but definitely of some entertainment value, one could say. Until then, it's goodbye.